maybe in. those are just like the rules imposed by the society and not necessarily however the smize is works. No, it was really unclear. Hey guys, it's Legend Wings back here with my friend Kaylee, and today we're bringing back Model Land. The best book ever. The best book you'll <laughs> ever hear. The best version of an audiobook to ever grace your ears is right here, right now. Yep. So, um, do you remember at all what happened last time since we recorded like a week ago? So, let's see. I remember Tuki, surprise, surprise, got chosen um, wow. to go to Model Land. I know, big surprise. That was a really big I was shock. so shocked. Yep. Um, and then she was, like, being hauled around in some weird, like, mesh bag yeah. behind the weird smize lady Yeah, they thing. went to some sort of, like, a superstore that was a big boautique or something and, like, like is that. And, like, is it, like, is it underground? I feel like it said it was underground. I think and it it's was like its own. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. But it, I know it's, like, its own, like, city country thing it was rather unclear did jet just die you know it was really unclear and then they picked up the other girl yep uh dylan dylan I remember yeah she had kind of a boyish dylan. name so dylan dylan and dylan's girl. like oh look at your eyes and yep so now they're both in the bag now they're both in the bag being carried by the scout Kidnapped, I mean. <laughs> kidnapped by the <laughs> Not kidnapped. They weren't kidnapped. It's fine. They both weren't walking for this event, but both got chosen. So this wasn't a kidnapping at all. I mean, at least Dylan, like, was walking. And she seemed to have interest in it. Just, like, I think she was probably walking, like, ironically. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to stand over here and do my own thing. Because... It's not gonna happen. happen. But Tuki wasn't walking. That no. still bugs me. No. Don't you have to be walking? That was the rules. You had to be walking and she was standing on a or, vehicle are, and got Or maybe in. those are just like the rules imposed by the society and not necessarily however the smizes work. You know, it was really unclear. So anyway, today we bring you maybe even three chapters. We'll see what we can get through. Um, we're gonna start with chapter 11. Shiraz Shiraz. I don't know what that means. The pouch swept through the green portal again. After a few minutes, a vanilla-scented breeze tickled Tuki's nose. In seconds, the pouch began to fill with thick white goo. What in the heck is happening? Dylan yelled. Uh, Tuki tried to move, but the goo had already reached her waist. It rapidly filled the pouch soon submerging even their heads so oh, they're dead is it gonna be whipped cream i am I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that's what it is <laughs> i am a little concerned right now <laughs> but weirdly tukey could breathe in it as easily as a fish could breathe in water the warm goo grew thicker it's warm though okay it's warm though <laughs> where are you well, I guess we'll there, find out. The warm goo grew thicker and thicker until it was difficult for her to move. Then she and Dylan were frozen in place. Crack! Suddenly, the goo, the goo released them. Tuki and Dylan tumbled, turned around, and saw a seven-foot candle busted open down the middle. The veiled scout was still in front of them, flapping away now in a waxy diamond-covered bodysuit. Dylan wiped some remaining goo from her eyes. Hey, Scout Lady! Did we for real just pop out of a candle? But the Scout didn't answer. The sky above was an inky black. The lights of a village glowed far below. Candles in all shapes and sizes lit the entire town. Every house had an immense candle where the chimney should have been, and thin candles illuminated every street. A stiff breeze blew, and all the lights flickered in a surge. Some blew out, but relit just seconds later. They have a candle instead of a fireplace? Like, a giant candle? I, instead of a chimney stack, they have a candle that just That's sits on top of their house. not helpful. That's not helpful, and I think it's very dangerous. <laughs> very dangerous, and yeah. Just, what? 
I didn't... Also, I'm confused by, like, the rules of these smizes. Like, I was thinking that since the one popped out of, like, the lamppost and one popped out of the car, they'd come from something, like, mechanicals if they were, like, right. maybe they're... I was going to say robots, but that doesn't but they work seem either. Like they're, like, transforming people. into things and they're people and... They're also more of like a ghosty pass through walls kind of deal. I don't know what they are. <laughs> but this is just getting weirder and weirder. Yep. Thanks, Tyra. So the candle house. The candle house is Oh, we're gonna we're about to get a name. Hang on. Oh, look over there. I'm trying to decide what Dylan sounds like. Is she a southern? Is she a southern belle? Sure, I can't do accents, accents. so mine are going to be just <laughs> it'll, terrible. It'll, so... it'll kind of fade in and out a bit, but it's okay. fine. Dylan pointed past a hill to an area much brighter than the rest of the Dylan lit town. It looks like a fire's blazing. I think she's southern, because that's the way it's written. The waxy smell in the air got stronger, as if someone had pushed a candle close to Tukey's nostrils. Suddenly, Tuki knew exactly where they were because it wasn't evident before what this place was filled with Yankee candles. Yankee Candle. <laughs> yes! No. <laughs> Man, that would have been so great. Candelabra, she murmured. Oh, Candelabra, she murmured in a tiny voice. She'd read about it in a book once. Candelabra was the world's candle manufacturing center. The source of waxy light for all. Okay, you could be a candle manufacturing center and not literally use candles as every part of your life. Like a <laughs> chimney stack. That's not a requirement, guys. It's not a requirement. It's also not helpful. No. You're not heating no. your home when the candle wick is at the top. No. You know, like a chimney and it's going to be lit on the top. You're not getting like heat into your house like you would with a fireplace. <laughs> Where it has the fire in the house. But hey, it looks super cool. Because everybody's got a candle sticking out of their house. And that's, as kids know, is super cool. I wonder if they have problems with fires. I'm assuming they would. Burn fingers and hot wax. Surprisingly, it doesn't seem like they're going to mention anything like that. Because that would be world building. And we don't do that here except for, like, the shock factor. So, yeah. I'm so confused by the rules of the world, or more likely the uh, lack of rules of this world. I'm very confused by these smizes. <laughs> smizes, the scouts, the whole competition together, like, I yep. don't understand. Oh, that's that. right, they're not smizes themselves, they're mm -hmm. scouts, aren't yep, they? Yep, they're scouts, so like, talent See, scouts. See, it's too confusing. <laughs> it's really bad, guys. <laughs> for real, for real? Dylan looked excited. Well, well, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. That's basically what I'm reading anyway. <laughs> for real, for real? Dylan looked excited. We sell candelabra candles in aisles 385 to 401. Sometimes I trek on over there during my break and inhale the fudge scented ones. Don't you just love fudge? Tukey grimaced. Chocolate was practically the only food she didn't like. Dylan's eyes goggled. Girl, you don't like chocolate? You must be crazy. The scout soared through the town's crooked cobblestone streets. A makeshift market of tents and tables sold fire starter kits and fire insurance. Well, they cut that, so okay. that kind of answers our previous question. <laughs> Down a narrow alley, a man scurried along, pushing a cart filled with the scrunched stubs of burnt-out candles. A tall, olive-skinned teenage girl with nervous eyes rushed alongside him. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> you want to take a crack at those? <laughs> because I'm going to... I feel like I'm going to offend anyone... If I try it at every language, I'm going to insult every language. Because I don't know what those symbols mean above E's and A's and I's. So you have, like, the pronunciation symbols I'm gonna see of, if I can... that, like, that show up in a dictionary that are supposed to tell you how to pronounce stuff. No one knows how it works. There it is. It's right down here. Down in the comments below. You tell us how to read that. See, like, I had to, like, look stuff up when I read, like, Aragon and, like, Allegation stuff has, like, 
a bunch of words like this with the different pronunciation symbols thrown in. This is a whole so other level. Up. All right. <laughs> She earned. I owe you. A-E, I owe you. <laughs> it's so bad. because I mean, this is one thing if I was reading it in my head, but it still sounds like nonsense. You could have said she was like, because I, okay, she, she says this, like, she urged. So it's not a song, but it. Because of the way that it's just... A-E-I-O-U! It's A-E-I-O-U! If it does this again, that's all I'm going to say is A-E-I-O-U. <laughs> and just repeat that a bunch of times because this makes no sense. Oh, dear. Tuki sat up straighter. They were speaking Labrian, the official language of Candelabra, which she understood perfectly. Oh, that's right. She knows all the world languages. The girl had just told the man, Teddy... I'm so nervous. The day of Discovery walk-up is about to start and my dress has still not arrived. See, now why did we have to have you literally, whatever the hell that was? You literally could have said, like, she was speaking another language, but Tuki understood. Blah, 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 blah. The girl said in Candelabrin, blah, 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 it doesn't blah, blah, make, blah. It doesn't make it any more or less impressive when you put a bunch of, like, Gobbledy when you gook. hold down the A key and then the E and then you throw in an I in there. Because you know this isn't any, like, Lord of the Rings shit where they actually have a language. Like, like a language actually... that people can, like, read and figure out yeah. and speak. Th- this this is different. This isn't it. This is just button mashing. Oh, look, it's a different language because even I don't know what it says. <laughs> it's Labrian? <laughs> Labrian. Labrian? Labrian, probably candelabra. Oh, yeah, Labrian. 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 Good. A petite, muscular girl with thick, curly hair, a face covered with freckles, and full lips ran toward the man and his daughter. She carried bundles and packages under her arms and wore a loose beige top that gaped at the neck, gathered shorts with, that flapped with her movements, and gladiator sandals whose straps looked on the verge of becoming undone. Oh, here's how she does it right now. In Labrian, the girl sang. Your frock needed steam. I'm sorry, I'm tardy. You're a Labrian dream, the belle of this party. After she Do they all sing for their language? I hope so. Oh, People look looking. She's yours. Don't sing. It's okay. You know, let's just walk. Can we walk? Oh, this will be fun. Because <laughs> then we could just start making up random tunes and it'll be great after she finished the song the messenger girl dropped the dress into the arms of the teen girl who looked extremely relieved thank you shiraz the father said to the messenger girl handing her a coin then she took off again darting in and out of the streets clogged with day of discovery aspirants 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 i've now that you say that, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I guess I've never actually used that the, in a sentence. The answer will be right here in case you can read what any of these symbols mean for pronunciation wise. I think it's aspirants. Aspirants. The girl approached hmm. a decrepit door and slipped an envelope underneath. Then she was off once more, stuffing envelopes under every door she passed. Her footsteps pattered rapidly against the stone streets. Man, oh man, that chick is quick, Dylan murmured. The scout swooped down and positioned herself right in Shiraz's path. They collided head on. Undelivered mail fluttered out of Shiraz's fingers, but she hardly looked fa- looked phased to see the scout. Oh, how should Shiraz sound? That's a good question, because I feel like we're going to have a lot of her talking. She's going to have like a... Like a sing-song voice, like a like a beautiful Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mm, otherwise everybody's gonna start sounding like a Valley Girl. Yeah. Because that's how I hear them all in my head. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Shiraz spoke in Labrian, confidently extending her hand to the scout. You have come for me. But the scout didn't react. Oh. <laughs> the girl tried again. You are here for me, yes? The scout remained motionless. 
Ah, the language barrier, Shiraz said in heavily accented English. I try to speak in the English. I am Shiraz Shiraz. Seven inches and... Okay, yeah. Seven inches and four feet tall. All I read was like seven inches. I'm like... <laughs> You missed that detail, Tyra. That would have been pertinent to know that she's a fairy. <laughs> that just reminds me that there's this one Pokemon episode where it has, like, Jesse and James looking at Aerodactyl, and James is like, oh, look at see the little marks here? It means it's only seven inches tall. <laughs> and, like, then when you actually look at it, it's feet. Seven inches and four feet tall. Perfect for studies at the Model Land, yes? Shiraz shook out her hair straightened her clothes, and stood as tall as her small frame allowed. The scout extended her hand, and Shiraz grabbed it with lightning speed. Don't they usually pick really tall people for models? Yeah. I think I remember the, the description of this book saying mm -hmm. something about, like, they picked, like, three or four really random odd girls. So this is, like, the scout's going all okay. out and picking the most random people. Okay. To kind of break the mold, kind of like Tyra does in the show, she tries to break okay. the mold. That's why she had a short season where like participants who are five foot seven who could actually like compete. Oh come on, that's not that. It's not short. What? Where's the camera? Short. 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 Yep. Mm -hmm. It was like people from Lies. five foot to five foot seven only, because five foot seven's like that's tall. That's tall. Tall to us. <laughs> tall, to us. <laughs> tall to us. Actual short people. Hello to the model and goodbye to the candelabra, she sang, her voice rising and falling melodiously. The pouch bulged and Shiraz tumbled inside and snap into the green hole once more. Shiraz noticed Tuki and Dylan and widened her eyes. Oh no, do not say you are my others. Your others, Dylan repeated. The other girls who are part of the model land. Shiraz waved her hands around, searching for the proper word. Experience, said Dylan. Shiraz shook her head briskly. Excursion? Tuki said shyly. What are they trying? Shiraz what? shook her head again. She's like trying to say a word to describe model land. Oh, like model land okay. experience. So I don't think she knows. Is, uh, I'm guessing Tina. Oh, okay, yeah. Discovery? Asked Dylan. Discovery, yes. Yes, Shiraz brightened. Then she frowned. But you two, you are not the beauty exceptional like Shiraz. Oh, <laughs> oh no, another one of these girls. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Dylan pursed her lips. Excuse me. I'm like channeling my inner Applejack voice at this point. I'm Applejack. We here at Sweet Apple Acres sure do like making new friends. Friends? <laughs> You may be all cute and little and can run as fast as an exotic feline in the plains, but hold up a sec, Miss Thang, cause Mo Miss Modeland, or should I say THE Modeland, Dylan mocked Cherise, don't have girls looking like you up in there either. And besides, you weren't even trying out, honey. Me and her saw you. Shiraz sniffed huffily. The jealousies in your pig body are burning like pig tripless candle. I blow you out now. <laughs> she covered her lips and blew in Dylan's face. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the taunting. This is like on par with the French taunting. The I fart in your You're general good. direction kind of deal. This is what this deal. feels like. This is interesting. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Dylan's nostrils flared. Oh, no. This little dot face thing did not just blow. Stop, Tuki blurted out, surprising even herself. Don't you realize none of us look like modeling girls? Not one of us. Dylan set her jaw, but Shiraz just peered at Tuki, confused. Tuki repeated the tirade in Labrian. Please don't fight, she added. I see enough fighting at home. Shiraz smiled slowly at Tuki, clearly amazed that Tuki could speak her language. But then she sat up straighter. Well, they pick us for some reason. Yeah, Dylan said toughly. 
although when she looked down at her broad thighs, an uncertain expression washed over her face. She looked up at Tuki. Do you got a theory? Tuki stared through the pouch at the electric lighting snapping around them in the tunnel. I don't know, she said. I just don't know at all. That's the end of chapter 11. <laughs> oh, it's chapter 12. First Princess of Sans Color. Oh. The pouch emerged into a sea of thin white strands. Some of them even entered the pouch, covering Tuki's head and drifting past her mouth. It tickled a little. Everyone started to giggle. What are we gonna pop out and na- no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, not wear it. Really, is what? What yeah. are we gonna pop out of now? Oh, ah. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll try it again. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> what are we gonna pop out of now? Dylan joked. A horse tail? Through the mesh wall of the pouch, Tuki saw a bear cave sized hole and peeked in. Sticky, pasty gunk with peach fuzz was lodged inside. She frowned. I think we're inside an ear. Oh. How can we be inside ear? Shiraz frowned. Ear of giant? That make no sense. <laughs> this whole journey ain't made no sense, Dylan said. Then a loud scream erupted. The girls jumped and looked at each other. Was that you? Dylan asked Tookie. <laughs> Tookie shook her head. Was that you? Dylan asked Shiraz next, but Shiraz shrugged. The pouch accelerated without warning, popping out of the sea of white. Behind them, Tookie saw a pale-skinned woman with long platinum locks screaming at the top of her lungs. She was also scratching her scalp and poking at her ears. Oh my god, they did come out of her. <laughs> oh no, that's so weird. This is a magic school bus. Come on now. <laughs> Dylan squinted. You know, I think Tuki was right. I think we just popped out of that gray-haired woman's head. Once again, the pouch emerged from the portal, giving the girls a giving the girls a view of a giant city in the distance. It was different from any city Tuki had ever seen. Hasn't she only seen the one city? I take it back. Now she's seen three. Yep, three but... whole cities. <laughs> but still. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. It was different from any city Tuki had ever seen. A clear protective dome covered the entire metropolis. The city was laid out in what appeared to be a perfect grid and reminded Tuki of one of her algebraic graphs. Not a speck of dirt marred the city streets. The most modern, high-tech buildings hovered about two stories above the ground, allowing pedestrians and vehicles unobstructed passage beneath them. That makes sense. <laughs> Didn't it just say, but they have, but they have roads. Yeah. Or did it say the city's laid out in a perfect grid? The city the was buildings. laid out? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The problem with having no roads, how are people going to drive? Just, just like do, just bumper cars kind of deal? Yeah, just bumper cars. It's bad enough when people like are on the road and can't follow directions. Imagine if there were like no roads and no lines yeah, that really like. Bring them in. You're actually going to have to pay attention now. <laughs> They're all doomed. Doomed. Tube-shaped elevators zipped up, down, side to side, and diagonally on the structure's exteriors. The scout, now translucent and sparkling, floated through the city toward the sound of thumping drums. As they arrived at the edge of the city square, a vast... Cr a vast crowd of girls, all with stark white hair and nearly translucent pale skin, moved with drill team precision. Tuki, Dylan, and Shiraz scrambled to the walls of the pouch so they could get a good view. Tuki gasped. Sans color, she whispered. She'd only read about it in books. It was a place that few ever got the chance to experience. Sans color, what? Dylan asked. Um, the word's color. <laughs> That was not the hard word. <laughs> Sans would be what you would be confused about, Dylan. I'm just saying. <laughs> yep. Um, Sans color, Tuki mumbled, unaccustomed to people asking her direct questions. 
About 800 pale-skinned girls wearing different types of blue uniforms and caps marched in formation. Along one axis, girls in teal marched together, doing hand and head movements in unison. Another group in navy pranced in the opposite direction. A third group, this one in aqua uniforms, sped along the intersecting axes. And a, and a fourth group wearing turquoise headed for the middle of the navy group. The overall effect was of four colorful trains running along intersecting tracks, each going, no, each set going in a different direction. Tuki was riveted by the show. The Navy and Turquoise groups nearly crashed into the Aqua and Teal groups, but they veered off at the last second, making a precise right turn. Is, is Day of Discovery for them? Shiraz whispered. Tuki nodded. Here, the T-Dot theme song had a drum major beat. The walkers wore the expression in common to every model and hopeful, just a bit toned down. Dylan squinted at the crowd. How do they stand out, for goodness sake? It's that battle of the blands. <laughs> Everyone had the same coloring. Alabaster skinned onlooker sat on bleachers, waiting for the performance. A brigade of pale white blonde soldiers stood at attention. Sitting in a plush, oversized cobalt blue chair in the middle of the stage was a platinum blonde woman. A tall, bored looking girl stood at her side. Even the birds in the sky were pale. A flock of pure white birds swooped past, their eyes cherry red. So this is this is the city Hitler rules. Yes. <laughs> but in blue. But in blue and white. There's lots of white and blue. It's very militar militaristic. It's in militaristic and it's white and blue. <laughs> and then with, you know, like albino um birds. Uh-huh. All right. Cool. Good. Did they kill all the other birds? I guess they just killed all the other birds. Because albinism is a uh, recessive Listen. trait. Mm -hmm. And if they're all, I'm assuming, albino birds being pure white with their cherry red eyes, they just killed they off just, all the birds they didn't like. They had bird genocide. <laughs> Everything's fine. Well, that's better than people this genocide. This is a safe. So. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is. <laughs> Everybody here sick, Shiraz whispered. No, they have albinism, Tiki whispered back. <laughs> you mean they albinos? <laughs> Shiraz blurted out. Okay. Tuki was pretty sure it was rude to call them albinos, but she kept her mouth shut, not <laughs> wanting to seem like a know-it-all. The scouts well. swooped through the crowd. All of the marching girls on the ground looked up and started to scream and stomp their feet turning the synchronized parade into chaos. Cool. <laughs> the platinum-haired woman in the throne-like chair frowned, popped her tongue, and rasped at the highly decorated soldier to her right. The soldier then uttered a short popping sound, which was repeated in unison by all the other soldiers down the line. All the girls immediately jumped back into formation. It's Calorian, Tuki whispered, listening to the distinct rasping, gurgling, popping, and sucking sounds. <laughs> to the untrained ear, the language sounded like someone swallowing a bucket of raw oysters. But to Tuki, each tiny sound was beautiful. Every language was. That sound makes me want to clear my throat, Dylan said, wrinkling her nose. The woman on the throne, evidently some kind of dignitary, blurted out more Calorian gurgles, slurps, pops, and rasps. But this time, to the scout. Tuki was a little rusty with Calorian, but she could understand well enough. I am the Prime Minister of Sans Color. This is an occurrence we have been awaiting. A chosen one from Sans Color at your model end might prove to be an effective ambassador for us. What that what that what that woman saying, Shiraz murmured. Sorry, I don't speak gobbledygook, Dylan said. Actually, I do, Tuki said, and then translated what the Prime Minister had just said. The girls goggled at her, hanging on her every word. The woman continued, and Tuki translated. If you can guarantee safety for whomever you choose, you may select anyone who declares herself willing. That is my pledge. Oh, well, that's nice that at least these ones are... <laughs> like, they give the girls a choice to be like... You can refuse them if you so desire. Yeah. So, like, if your parents, like, pressured you into this, you can still say okay, no. no. Although, I guess the other ones could, too. 
Like, because yeah. they actually, like, go and take the um, scout's hand. Right. I suppose they could. But it's just weird that... This is a much more orderly fashion. They're They're very militarian, and that makes me a little nervous. <laughs> it's an interesting way to look at it, though, that they'll be an ambassador, not just... Yeah. Oh, you'll be, like, worshipped, adored. Yeah. This is probably a better <laughs> outlook for it than it was in Metopia. Interesting. Wh- whose name speaks for itself. <laughs> the scout bowed to the prime minister and the crowd cheered the tall bored looking girl who had been standing behind the throne stepped out to get a better look at the scout she had keen bright rose-colored eyes and an intense expression that made her appear highly intelligent she probably was tuki thought all people from sans color were supposed to be off the chart geniuses Slowly, the scouts scanned the hundreds of girls in the procession, then floated over the prime minister's head and landed in front of the bored-looking girl, who stood poised like a statue. The scout extended her bejeweled hand. The crowd gasped even louder. The prime minister whirled around. Not Piper, she shouted, a vein in her pale forehead glowing blue-green. Okay, they have color. What? <laughs> I can understand it looking more, well, I can understand it looking, like, blue. Because, like, deoxygenated blood and, like, veins are usually associated with, like, a bluish color, but it Probably looks green. super alien. Just because of the white. Oh, everything. just because of no pigment, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Ooh. Anyway. The, the Prime Minister whirled around. Not Piper, she shouted, a vein in her pale forehead glowing blue-green. Guardians! The soldiers aimed their weapons at the scout and the pouch. You cannot take her, the prime minister declared, standing protectively in front of the girl. She is my daughter. Uh Uh-oh, Dylan snickered. We're in the middle of a royal mama-daughter showdown. Oh, boy. The scout bowed respectfully and turned away to scan the crowd of other pale tea daughters. But the girl ran around her mother to face the scout. Yeah, Madame, please do not listen to my ridiculous mother, the queen. (laughs) <laughs> it's emphasized like that. Nice. The girl rolled her eyes. I am Piper, first princess of Sans Color, and I have rights. I hereby accept admittance to Model Land. You go. Good on you, Piper. Piper's mother <laughs> hurled a menacing popping sound at her daughter. I will not allow you to go to that mindless school on the mountain, Tuki translated. <laughs> she said all that with that one sound, Dylan said. Before anyone could stop her, Piper grabbed the scout's hand. Suddenly, the girl was in the pouch, too. The prime minister's face twisted with shock and fury. Fire, she yelled. The pouch jerked hard as the scout flew away. The girls were thrown left, then right, as the scout spiraled frantically through the air. Okay. She's dodging the bullets, Tuki thought, her heart in her throat as the soldiers fired their weapons again. Oh. Okay, hang on, though. So this this scout can pass through walls and conveyor belts yeah. and pop out of people. You would think that bullets would not be a problem. You would think they wouldn't be. She can obviously like go through like other materials, objects. Oh, I would assume that she's kind of like a ghost and can just float through things. Why? You why is this a problem? Because they needed a sense of danger right now. That and jeez, this queen lady. Oh, yes, yes, you may pick anyone, anyone. who you choose. Oh, now and... my daughter. Okay, I'm going to kill you now. And that every girl has the right to, like, accept or deny uh, being chosen. Mm. Hmm. Yep. All righty. Yeah, sure. Well, she taught her daughter. Well, the daughter knows she's got her rights. She's going to yep. use them. It sounds kind of like a her. King Louis kind of a thing. <laughs> Let's see uh, where I leave off. Oh, she's dodging the bullets, Tuki thought her heart in her throat as the soldiers fired their weapons again. Whirling sideways, the pouch burst out of the bubble, dangerously close to a war-torn concrete jungle that surrounded Sans Color. It's it's in a dome. I forgot it was a dome. It was like the bubble. <laughs> Thousands of ten-foot spears pointed at the bubble now shifted their aim to the scout. Okay, so this sentence should probably be rephrased a little to the thousands of ten-foot spears that had pointed at the bubble, now shifted their aim to the scout. Yeah. It's a little bit of Is it easier on me to, to read and understand? Yeah. Anyway. A horde of demonic, yellow-eyed jungle inhabitants stared at the pouch, roaring savagely. 
One wrong move, and the pouch would be ripped to shreds. So, I guess outside of the bubble dome of Sans Color, there's people with color and demonic yellow-eyed jungle inhabitants. Are those people, or are they animals, or... Also, They're... also, this this scout has proven she can fly. She flew above the city with Tuki when she picked her up. She's flying now. All you gotta do is fly above their heads. I just... This shouldn't be, again, just like the bullets, this shouldn't be a concern or a this problem. The whole idea of sans color, if you were taking it in this world's context, would, I feel like, not be a good thing. <laughs> like, it very seems like if they're talking about things with spears in the outside of the bubble that have color. <gasps> It <laughs> seems really racist to me. Uh. <laughs> like, savages, savages, barely even human. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Everybody's really white. Oh, because, yeah, if you take that, if you uh -huh. look at it that way, oh, no. Uh-huh. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I I really sincerely hope that's not the case. Oh, that's... it's 100% Tyra didn't mean it that way. Right. But... I mean, like. I mean, I hope that's not, like, what the people out there look like either, because then that just makes it look even worse. Yep. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right. Your turn. You get to read about those and have all the fun Yay. accents. Yay. I like accents as long as I can remember how to do that, them. And I'm thinking they might not be pe people. I believe Dylan refers to them as things in the next oh, part. She... So I'm hoping that they're not people, for Tyra's sake, because... Just because. <laughs> All right. Chapter 13, The Express Lane. Which is interesting because we just read two really short chapters. And now this is a significant chapter. So, The Express Lane. What in the name of Wombat Milk are those things? Dylan screamed as the scout lifted the pouch high above Sand's color. Piper, who was huddled on one side of the pouch away from the others, covered her eyes and shook her head violently. The le- the le- she stammered. The le- gizzards? Tuki guessed. She'd read about them in the only Calorian history book at the Peppertown Library. The creatures encircled the sand's color bubble, desperate to get inside. They can't reach you here, she said, speaking in Calorian to Piper. We're safe. Okay, now I need a- I need a sound for Piper. What does Piper- does Piper have, like, an English accent? Because she's, because I don't she's know, but I think she, maybe, I think it would also be very, like, eloquent and very, like, yes. straightforward, because it's very militaristic, um, oh, yeah. upbringing, very poised, if we can manage this. So how do we sound? I'm thinking of Olivia. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> of Armstrong. Of Armstrong. And, yep. like, that toughness, but, because, like, she's bold and, like, bullheaded like that is kind of what it looks like, but I don't know. So just kind of in general bullheaded. So she doesn't need an accent necessarily, but she just speaks. I think she's maybe more straightforward, knows exactly what she wants, okay. and is like confident in herself. Okay, and then Tuki's going to kind of have that liltering kind of like, I don't know about myself. I, I'm the main character, so therefore I have no self-confidence. <laughs> kind of a thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. You know my language, Piper said, switching to English. Impressive. And rare. What's your name? Tuki lowered her eyes. Her name's Tuki, Dylan spoke for her. She don't talk so much, but she knows what everybody else is saying, no matter what the language. But she's been talking almost this entire time. And translating stuff, which maybe those weren't necessarily her own words, but, but she's been talking. She's been More talking. More than Sh Sh Shiraz, she whatever just, her name is. What's her name? Yeah, Shiraz. Shiraz. I'm trying to figure out, because every one of these lands, I feel like it's supposed to correspond with an existing, like, in our world, land, or kind of ethnicity kind of a thing. Because we had the, um, Tre Jolie people, are supposed to be French people. Mm -hmm. But we Where Tuki's from? Well, no, she's from Utopia. They just do a bunch of Tre Jolie things. It may be. She might be. But, like, they have, like, other stuff and, like, throw in, like... But she says they speak French. English, though. That's true. So I honestly I think she's just like what Metopia is America. 
is my guess. I don't know. It's really hard to say, but I'm just trying to like. This is a very different. It's hard to tell where everyone is from, yeah. considering these worlds are just like off the wall weird. They're just really, really random. All right. So, what are the people they're looking at? The, the lizards. The, the gizzards. The leg gizzards. Leg gizzards. Leg gizzards. <laughs> But they're like, the le gizzards, because le gizzards is one word. Those things. The gizzards? Shiraz widened her big brown eyes. Pick balloon over your city to keep the gizzards out, yes? Piper nodded. Yes, the bubble protects us from the sun and the le gizzards. They live outside sand's color and thrive off color calorian sweat breads. Sweet breads. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I just couldn't go... Back it up. Let me read the sentence again. <laughs> it's just when you get thrown so many words, I wasn't surprised that it would say sweat breads. Let <laughs> me Let me try this. Okay. Piper nodded. Yes, the bubble protects us from the sun and the lake gizzards. They live outside sand's color and they thrive off calorian sweetbreads. Sweet breads, Shiraz exclaimed, rubbing her tummy. Would be nice now. Stomach is doing the growling. <laughs> Think less pancakes and pie crust and more pancreas and thymus glands, Piper stated with a shiver. What? Think more what? <laughs> Less pancakes and pie crust and more pancreas and thymus glands. I mean, like, yeah, those are real things, but I I don't get her. I, I'm not picking up what she's throwing oh, down. Let's keep going <laughs> and see if we can figure this out. Hundreds of Calorians have been butchered by the leg gizzards, including my father. Although my mother, the queen, at this piper rolled her eyes. Lies to our people and says he succumbed to a deadly dermal disease. This is still not clear. Tuki's mouth made a small O. Oh. Dylan and Shiraz fell silent. My papa died too, Shiraz volunteered. Really? My dad had passed when I was a wee little thing. Dylan looked off into the distance. Piper turned to Tuki. What about you? Is your father alive? Tuki thought about Mr. De La Creme. This is how you introduce yourself to people. Is your dad dead Is too? your dad dead? My dad's dead. Oh, we have something in common. Not that we got chosen, but that our and fathers are Dylan, all dead. And why is Dylan, like, trying to make it sound like it's a competition? That's awful. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad. Also, shouldn't we be more focused on the lizard things? Yeah, we're just going to forget about those because okay. we're not going to mention that they're probably people because we haven't said that they're explicitly animals. <laughs> I don't know. I'm picturing giant walking lizards holding spears. I'm hoping. Because that would be kind of cool. But I'm not giving this book that much credit. <laughs> now I'm picturing like a uh, king uh, crocodile thing uh, from Smash Brawl. Oh, That's yeah. not his name, but... King Crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend will be so proud of me. <laughs> Tuki thought about Mr. De La Creme. Um, I lost my father too, just recently. It was, in a way, true. The four of them had at least one thing in common. No! It's not! No, no, it's not no! no. Wait, Tuki, it's not. Not. This won't come back to bite her in the, the butt later thing. about lying to people. <laughs> yes, your dad's a drunk. Yes, your family was talking about giving you away. But that's not, like, the same as him being dead. Yep. Or being eaten by something. Like, come on. I'm pretty sure they all went through a way different experience than what she yep. did. Not that her experience is, like, therefore good because her dad's right. not dead. But it's, it's not the same level of, like... Oh, your dad's dead. Well, and my the, dad's not a part of the picture is, anymore. This is gonna be. This is gonna come back to bite her in the butt. I just know. Here's another theory, because they're gonna be like, "Well, you lied to us," and she's like, "Well, he's not no. dead, but 100 I mean, like, Tuki, all you had to say is like, "Well, my family doesn't really get along. My dad's still alive, but he might not be my dad." Yeah, and 
Just leave it there. Yeah. We're not sure he's my dad or not. <laughs> That's what my parents discussed last. <laughs> oh, dear. Then Piper straightened up and gave Dylan a closed-lipped, narrowed-eyed, strangely striking glare. For a moment, as the light caught her, she looked like a muse in a painting. I see you staring at me. Dylan looked caught. I... But people have little to... My people have little to no melanin in their skin, hair, and eyes, Piper explained in a clipped voice. It makes us susceptible to excruciating sunburns and various terminal diseases, not to mention stares from people like you. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, Dylan blurted out. Yeah, right. Piper turned away. She got cold. Really Real quickly. quick. <laughs> Real quick. Okay. Tuki couldn't bear more fighting. So you are really, um, a princess, she asked, changing the subject. Piper turned to her. A small smile formed on her pale face. Not exactly. I just call myself that to annoy my dear mother. She's an elected official, but acts like a queen. I actually campaigned for oh. her opponent during the election. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> Really? Girl, you got some guts, Dylan applauded. She's Olivier. I, she's, she's in Olivier. my mind, she's like a young Olivier. Olivier. And it's great. <laughs> the pouch popped out into a windy, thunderous sky and swelled and dropped dramatically. The four girls looked out every side of the pouch to see if they could tell where they were. What happened to the Legizards? <laughs> we don't. I want to know. <laughs> I hope they come back up later because yeah, we. Just... It leaves off chapter what twelve? Leaves off chapter twelve with oh my gosh, they're gonna like rip the bag to shreds. We're all gonna die, kind of a feel. Yep. And and it just drops off. Come we on. Know, we know nothing about the Legizards. I and... want to know. We... I wouldn't be that surprised if we never hear about the Legizards ever again. That and what the heck is going on with the sweet breads and like their pancreas and I'm so confused and why what's her face brought it up? I just I mean they're eating them, but you didn't have. I'm to, like, so confused and like just why she has my, that statement. It's my be best guess. It, is it that doesn't connect well enough. It's because people are like so white. They're like white bread. And that's how she's describing them. But, I guess. But at the same time, like, pie crust and pancakes are, like, white, white, white. No. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's see. Where are we at now? <laughs> Thick fog covered the ground below. Voodoo-style drum beats sounded from the ground. What voodoo-style drum beats sound like? Like... Drums and now I'm picturing like, are we some like a New weird... Orleans kind of like a jazz drum beat in the background? I'm thinking like maybe like spooky. Yeah, spooky. Some like dark some drum like beats. Dark drum beats, so it's like some spooky spooky kind of vibe. I'll have to look into that. In the distance they saw what they thought were the Modeland gates. A wide expanse of bright orange and red flame shot from the top of the mountain. Are the gates on fire? Dylan asked shakily. No, 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 Shiraz clutched her head. Cannot be happening. Dylan looked at her. What can't be happening? Shiraz trembled with fear. This is the, this is the real reason we are, were chosen for the model end, she began to sing in a sweet, haunting voice. On the day of discovery, when new recruits arrive, a plan of debauchery, when all but four survive, Deformed and defectives, they torture and connive till no bones are connective. They blaze the four alive. What? <laughs> what? What? Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. <laughs> Why did she go with them? <laughs> if that's what she thinks, but. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Apparently, this must be a thing that happens in Candelabra then. They must burn people in that giant pyre that they saw earlier. Remember I don't think those, that's the they case. They saw the giant flames in the distance? Do you remember that part? I do now. 
I think it's more of just like I'm think like so we know that there have been like stories and like people have been kind of like fearful of what happens to the models that don't don't Maybe. get chosen. I don't know if like they just never show back up again. So yeah, that I would mean, be real suspicious if. if all these girls that get chosen every year never show up. I mean... So then maybe it makes sense So if they're thinking, like, well, I guess four of them, maybe they just throw in the fire. This is interesting. I don't know. But it's a very nice song she wrote. I, I appreciate her improv. <laughs> when Shiraz finished, she looked at them. When I was little girl in Candelabra, that song we sang, she, Shiraz whispered. You know sacrifice rumors, right? They drew. Piper frowned. Why did she choose <laughs> to go with her? I don't know. Piper frowned. I haven't heard anything about sacrifice. Really? Dylan raised an eyebrow. Those rumors run rampant all up and down the bow big teak aisles. It goes something like Modeland brings in four less girls to brutally experiment on them and then sacrifice them. To some ancient sort of, sort of ancient gorgeous goddess or something. Shiraz nodded frantically. Yes, yes, exactly that. So, you believe we're this year's fresh meat? Piper asked. Yes, Shiraz squeaked. Four crazy looking girl in a sack. They will burn us in ceremony. A loud thud echoed through the pouch. How big is this pouch? I don't know. You would think if he was holding three objects in it, they kind of all squish together in the center. But if you get a I mean, they can also it, like get up and like walk around to the different right. like walls of the pouch. So I feel like it's poorly described when it's being described as a pouch. Well, like it's describing the manner in which it's picked up, but not in the manner that the material works. Unless it's like a coin purse kind of a pouch, and then maybe. Um, I'm just assuming the pouch is just kind of growing as they pick up each new person. Could be. Could be. I mean, it's already like weird magic. <laughs> I don't it's know a, anymore. It's just a weird book, guys. A loud thud echoed through the pouch. Dylan had fainted. She was now flat on her back. A ghastly she's fine. <laughs> she's fine. A ghastly expression frozen on her face. Tuki scooted over to check on her. Dylan? Dylan? Dylan batted her eyelids open and mumbled. I need to clean up on aisle one nine to seven. Oil spill. She didn't just like pee her pants, right? That's not what that's I think wrong. it's just that like she just she, fell like, over fell over and it's I think it's just it's just a little weird. I think that line was supposed to be funny. I'm just like no, eh. no, it's kind of weird. Eh. Dylan, you're in the pouch, Piper said. But what about my siblings? Dylan asked. I got four of each. So why did you leave them if you're concerned about them being alone? I mean, she that was her first thought. She said, no, I won't go with you. But then like the mom or someone shows up. She's like, no, go, honey, go. Yeah. Be free. But then why is this coming up as a concern now again? Because that's going to be her insecurity the whole time. It's like, oh, or maybe that, or maybe it's because like it's maybe she's now not thinking about like, oh, it's this dream to like be a model. Maybe now it's, Ugh. oh shoot, I've thrown away like everything and left my family to starve, all to be you know sacrificed. Maybe that's what brought maybe. the thoughts back up. I don't know. This is just jumping from, like, just all over. What it's, happened to the little gizzards? And then it went to, like, parents or dads are dead. Just, and now it's back to families left behind and sacrifice. Oh and we've still got, like... It's just jumped all over. We've still got 14 pages of this kind of action going down. So, guys, buckle in. This is going to be a longer ride here. Tuki's heart pounded fast. She'd heard of the sacrifice rumors, too. Everyone in Metopia whispered about them, debating whether they were true. And Toxabellas were even asked in interviews if the torture and murders really happened. Every Intoxabella denied it, but maybe that was because they didn't know, or worse, were in on it. Reality started to set in. Tuki had known this was all too good to be true. 
Of course Model Anne didn't want her, a dirt and snot-eyed, freaky-looking forget-a-girl. Look, Piper screamed, pointing at the diabolical divide. That's what it's called. It's an actual name of the place and not a descriptor. It's a diabolical divide. Tuki okay. shot up. Lightning flashed every few seconds in time with the beating of the drums. With each strike, Tuki saw the evidence of lives somehow lost. A filthy gray hooded sweatshirt caught on a dead tree limb. A patent leather backpack, its pockets ripped open, abandoned near a small stream. Half a girl's white sneaker propped against a tree stump. Ooh. The shoe looked as though something had taken a huge bite out of it. Tuki swore she saw some blood smeared on the toe. Those items must be from the expired pilgrims who caught the plague, Piper said quietly. Expired? Dylan shook her head. The princess of sans color is all the princess of understatement. Those pilgrims aren't just expired, honey. They're dead. They ain't no pilgrims, Shirai cried desperately. They killed through sacrifice. The scout made an abrupt incline. Only the glowing eye at the very top of my land was visible. Here's where we insert the eye again. Yep. <laughs> the thumping of the drums grew stronger, vibrating through Tuki's chest. The flames shot higher into the air, setting fire to a giant wall made of mishmash of unidentifiable items. Then the gates of Myland came fully into view. They were made of blue and gold metal and deeply engraved silver and they had gears on both sides that seemed to be some kind of high-security locks. The scout flew lower and lower. Tuki chewed feverishly on the inside of her lip. Her heart was pounding so fast she was sure it might soon rip from her chest. Could Shiraz be right? Were they flying to meet their doom? The pouch's walls begin to... I'm just confused because it changed tense. And I was making Wait. sure I didn't read that wrong. Does it swap back to second person? Or no, it just it was just changes the pouch to present tense. Because we were in past tense. Oh yeah, we were. Because yeah, the pouch's walls begin to drip and not began to drip. You're not supposed to do that. I'm pretty yeah. Because I was You're a change. I'm to not change crazy, tense. right? Because I'm bad sometimes with tense when I write. But I am right now, right? <laughs> You're correct. That's yes. it swapped to present tense and it probably to like probably to build suspense, but but it just You're not supposed to I say tripped. tense. I tripped so hard over there. I'm like, I had to have read that nope, it says begin. I was waiting. The pouch's walls begin to drip. The pouch's walls begin to drip liquid, lightly at first, but then the wetness poured down in sheets. Ugh. They screwed it, up. It switched, didn't it? They screwed up, so it wasn't even intentional. They just your yeah. your editor screwed up. Your <laughs> editor your editor screwed up multiple times. I'm pretty sure. Because your editor is not just your gram grammar person. Usually, your editor is also well, checking you have for like, like two different kinds of editors. Usually, like ones that check like grammar, another one that checks like story wise and like trying to like make lines sound better and whatnot, but. That's just, Weird. you're not supposed to switch tense. See, little errors like that make me happy because it means, like, even professional editors right. aren't perfect. So it gives me hope for myself. This is true. This it is a good find. It makes me feel better about myself whenever I screw up with something. <laughs> so that's good, then, that we at least got one of those that we noticed for sure. It makes us feel better. Yep. They're going to use this liquid to electrocute us, Dylan cried. They could just electrocute you because you're flying. Or just, you know, drop your pouch in with the lid gizzards or any yep. whatever fiery thing they saw. Tuki felt a wet hand slip into hers. <laughs> it was Dylan's. <laughs> I, just, I had to leave the suspense there for a second. <laughs> Piper grabbed Tuki's hand from the other side and Shiraz gripped Piper. Tukey's They're all friends now. Best of friends. They can all hold hands. Can hold hands. As they almost die. We're gonna go into our death at the gates of Modeland. Okay, but like, I, 
They're scared. Okay. 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 Sure. Yeah. We'll let you have it. Tuki squeezed her eyes shut, bracing for impact. The pouch skidded on the ground with a loud, jarring thump. There was a ripping sound, and the pouch split open, spilling out Tuki and the girls. Tuki leaned down and grabbed the empty pouch in a panic, rummaging through it, trying to locate the scout. But the fabric remained lifeless in Tuki's arms. The scout was nowhere to be found. I don't know why she's looking in the pouch, because the scout wasn't in the pouch. Yeah. The scout was flying holding the pouch. I mean, You'd she be shows looking around. up, like, with, like, the fabric and whatnot when she first shows up for Tuki, but... Yeah. An immense umbrella appeared out of nowhere and plopped into the middle of the pouch. Oh, thank God, Piper said, grabbing it and holding it over her head, surely to block her sensitive skin from the sun's rays. Okay. Okay. We were just, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess. Suddenly, the strange voodoo drumming stopped. The silence was deafening. The girls looked around. They were in a large clearing atop green grass. Tuki ran her hands over the green and in the dim light realized it was not grass, but fine fabric. Now what we do- How could you mistake that? Especially as fine fabric, so you're thinking fine, like it's not- Are they like, like actual grass, but made out of like itty bitty strips of fabric or- What? Of everything in model land that's supposed to be nature related, or yeah, in model land, that's supposed to be nature related, is like made out of fabric. fabric. I'm gonna be kind of like upset. Also, aren't they on like some mountain? Isn't that what Model Land is yeah, on? Because they've got like Tyra's eye at the top. Well, and that's then... where they were supposed to be, but now they're they're now they're in a clearing. So I was thinking like Mount Olympus is kind of how I'm picturing like the Model okay. Land mountain. Okay. Okay. But now I'm trying to figure out where in Mount Olymp Mount Olympus I would put this clearing. Before it, maybe? Maybe the gates aren't, like, on Mount Olympus. Maybe they're, like, a couple steps Maybe you before. don't, like, get into the city right. until you make it Yeah, you gotta, through. like, walk through the gates, and then there's the clearing. I'm guessing that's what's going on. And then the mountain's, like, right in front of you. I mean, it makes sense. You can't just go and, like, get a penthouse, like, you're in the middle of the city, like, right off the bat like that. I suppose so. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> now what we do, Shiraz whispered. Something shot toward them through the darkness. When Tuki's eyes adjusted, she saw a tall creature with a head shaped exactly like a human hand, with four fingers and a long thumb. <laughs> the palm of the hand contained pale blue eyes, two holes for a nose, and two full lips. Below the strange hand was the body of a normal human. Oh my god, what, what? is this? What? What? Is wait, wait, wait. So, okay, so your hand, and then hand. like a super long like thumb. As, like, your face? Yeah, this is your whole head, is your hand. And you got eyes and two holes for your nose, and you got a mouth, and then the rest of the body's normal. So think, like, it's kind of reminiscent of... Are they of... just a handsy person? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't... The first thing I thought of was maybe, like, the creatures from Spy Kids that are, like, the thumb thumbs or whatever. <laughs> They're all made of thumbs. But no, this is just a head... Like a hand. If I could, like, just replicate so this slight. effect for you guys. Wait, I can do it. You got this? Yep. There. There you go. It's That's fine. what this looks like, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's roll with it. Just why? <laughs> because it has to be weird AF, or it's not legit. You know, it could be worse. It could just be they could have a foot for a face. I don't know that would make it better or worse. It's just bad. <laughs> At least the hand would be useful, I would think. You could still, like, grab things. And... Would you want to grab stuff with your face? <laughs> if you need another hand. Again, it's better than having a foot. It's not good. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> maybe, is it because, maybe this person says talk to the hand a lot. <laughs> Isn't their mouth like on If their that palm? if that joke doesn't come later and somebody refers <laughs> this person and says talk to the hand. I was just kinda of briefly reading over these words I'm gonna to have to try to say and uh -oh. I I apologize because it's gonna take me a second. Hello mademoiselles. Je m'appelle Guru Applause. Applause. Guru Applause. 
Je m'appelle. At least I could read that part. Je m'appelle Lafayette. <laughs> je m'appelle Lafayette. Or I was thinking of a Friends reference, like, je m'appelle Boo Boo. Great. Okay, faster. Je. Je. Ma. Ma. Pelle. Pelle. Je m'appelle. Mes poo poo. <laughs> She's always trying to learn French from Phoebe. <laughs> Toute la fruit. Merci. Au revoir. Yeah. Toute la fruit. <laughs> Hello, mademoiselles. Je m'appelle Guru Applause. The head of the couture department, the creature said in a thick Trejole accent, smiling with its broad mouth full of perfectly straight white teeth. I am beyond excite you have arrived early. Your lack of tardiness deserves a round of applause, oui? With a squeal of pleasure, the creature leaned all the way to the left and hit its head hand, hand head to its left palm, and then did the same on the right side with its right palm. Just looking at this bizarre <laughs> ovation made Tuki dizzy. I think I think I was on crack or something. Cause like, this is like people from Lamp Post make so much more sense than Lady with a hand for head now, with a face on it too. Uh, the face on it. It's just mm -hmm. wait. Does she have eyes or just a mouth? No, she's got pale blue eyes, two holes oh. for her nose, and two full lips with very straight white teeth apparently, so that again gives you the, the impression of the annoying orange. Why? But she spoke, She speaks like Lumiere though, so you're supposed to trust her. <laughs> oui, oui. Mademoiselle. That thing gave... That thing gives new meaning to the phrase, talk to the hand. Hey, <laughs> it was called it. <laughs> Wow, yep. I bet you Tyra made that character just to make that joke. Mm -hmm. Tuki couldn't help but giggle. Ah, you are the seamstress I ordered, no? The hand looked excited. The intox... The intox theme this year is insects of the bush. And I need all the extra helping hands I can get. Seeing as I only have three. It paused for effect, a coy smile on its face. Now let's get to work. We. Oui? No, I do impress appreciate these French, like, little words thrown in. It really helps me get the accent going if I can have some words to speak beforehand. It gives me kind of like... Oui, oui, mon ami. <laughs> oui, oui, mon ami. Je n'ai pas la payette. <sighs> Yellow smoke began to swirl around the girl's feet. Shiraz jumped back. Sacrifice is starting! Now I'm speaking French with her. <laughs> Sacrifice is starting! I too young and spry to die. The other girls yelped and grabbed each other's arms. Tuki could barely breathe, she was so afraid. But as she grasped the girls hard, she suddenly felt one small note of reassurance. She wasn't going to die alone. The other three actually wanted to face Good. death with her. No, I don't think that they want to face it with you. They just don't want to die. I think if they had the opportunity, they would run and leave you. They would leave you behind, Tuki. I'm sorry. They don't want to die with you. They don't want to die, period. The smoke rose higher, fully encircling them. Tuki squeezed her eyes shut. At least I had an adventure at the very end, she told herself. She could feel the hot flames on her cheeks. The smoke tickled her nostrils. Suddenly, the smoke flew away, coming to a halt in a wall-like clump a few feet from the girls. Slowly, the cloud wall reassembled, forming a door of black smoke. The door flipped open. Behind it was a black chamber full of angry, swirling wind. Tuki's hair blew backward. Piper gripped the umbrella tightly, but it turned inside out anyway. Dylan and Shiraz covered their eyes. I am just like... Reading so slow to kind of take in what is going on. <laughs> what the actual heck is going on right now? Smoke surrounded mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. moved from them, built a wall of smoke. Black smoke appeared, made door, and opened, and this wind blew at them. Yes. I think. Are we sure Tyra was okay when she wrote this? There's no drugs involved in writing this? I don't know. That had to be her method, right? Maybe she just wanted, like, the weirdest thing that she could think of. I feel like I couldn't get this weird if I was on drugs. <laughs> like, this is just so mind-blowing. I, I don't know that my creativity ex expands quite this far. You know, that's okay. <laughs> it is You're very okay. Off for it. Oh, man. 
I'm just, mm, mm. I'm still like, I'm still weirded out by the hand person thing. And so does the hand person thing think that they're like assistants? Is that what she said? Like she I can think, always use more helping hands? I think that they're there to be assistants, but maybe they'll get to compete. But I think they're mostly there to be assistants. Well, that sucks. <laughs> so yeah. Probably because Juki has small fingers, as her mother's pointed out like six or seven times. That's a problem She's for the gherkins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ten more pages to go. <laughs> you can do it. <sighs> Power through. Oh, yep. Here we go. A nude figure emerged through the doorway, <laughs> stalking toward them with a rhythmic pace. With each step, the tornado wind whipped even faster. Then the figure raised its arms. Tuki felt a tugging sensation under her feet. The pouch whipped out from underneath them and streamed into the figure's fingertips. I'm just so lost. At least maybe they'll get clothing. <sighs> I hope so. Dylan's mouth trembled. She looked like she was about to faint. Well, you did already, so I'm surprised you haven't again. What in the heck is going on? She murmured. These girls murmur a lot. I'm noticing this chapter. Smaller pieces of fabric shot from the figure's fingers and into the air, hanging weightlessly over the girls. The strips of material tumbled and lashed around their heads, ripping and combining violently into undergarments of every color and fabric. A white lace girdle whipped past. A purple Mary widow floated by, followed by a chartreuse camisole, marigold briefs, and blue bloomers. Don't call them bloomers, please. Sweet adorable bloomers! Quit that already, it's creepy! The unmentionables floated in front of the dark- <laughs> You just mentioned them! The unmentionables. I feel like I know the word, but I can't picture in my mind what a girdle looks like right now. So I was I'm thinking- thinking I'm, It makes me think of, like, corset. That's what I was wondering. But that's not what it is. Girdle? They have a- Mary Widow. I don't know what that is. Let's see. We need to look. Because we know Camisole. All right. Camisole, so. we got that. A girdle and a Mary Widow. Like, Merry Christmas. Yeah? Um. Did I call it? Well, there are multiple things. Oh, this is very inconsistent. So, okay, forget this. Forget images. No, no, no. Just Go definition. Just definition. And then it pulls up lyrics. Okay. Oh the God. Merry Widows and Opera. No. Not quite. No. Don't pull up something weird. It's going to pull up something well, weird. Well, okay. So, oh, okay. So, historically, it used to be armor. Ooh. Ooh. I want a Merry Widow. Okay. Part, so, historically, a piece of plate armor covering the torso. It's like, like Spanx. It's like Spanx. It's like Spanx. It's oh, fun fact when you click on the link to Girdle, that is not, not what a Girdle. <laughs> It pulls up a priest in full robes. I'm like, no. Yep, that's, that's what a girdle is, guys. Good job. All oh, right, well, dear. what a girdle really is, it's like form-fitting foundation <laughs> garment that circles, like, the lower torso, yeah. so, and, like, goes, like, below the hips. So, okay. like, yeah, so just, like, around, like, your lower midsection. Yep. And shapes that. Just, okay. It doesn't come up quite as high as a corset, I believe. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep reading. <laughs> We got lots more weird stuff to cover. Oh my <laughs> God! I heard for life. <laughs> the unmentionables floated in front of the dark figure that had appeared at the door. Suddenly, a long, bejeweled, tentacle-like necklace appeared. Our scout, oh. Tuki breathed. The scout chose a pair of very unsexy blue bloomers and put them on her bare body. All of the other intimates were sucked back into the scout's fingers. And then, thwop! More garment, garment shot out of the scout's fingers. A one-shouldered, I don't know clothes words other than t-shirt and jeans. A bias cut, burnt orange, chemise? Chemise, Chem I think. Chemise? Chemise? A maroon eel skin jacket with severe shoulder pads. An eel skin jacket? Eel skin. Snake skin? We got eel skin now. No. A fire engine red felt Is pork that a real pie thing? hat. Wait, are eels are eel skin jackets real things? Hang on. Well, I've got you just got a pair of metal studded heather gray angle boots, which I feel like are pretty standard today. 
Oh my gosh, there's a real thing as an eelskin jacket. The item spun around and around. The scout's jeweled appendages acted like hands and arms, moving the choices around into in unconventional ensembles. When the jewels had settled on a perfect selection, they thrust the winning selection onto the scout. The remaining choices were sucked up into the scout's fingers once more. The scout was left wearing a plunging white v-neck blouse with so many odd angles to it, Tuki couldn't quite figure it out. A high-waisted cors high corset indigo blue fine woven cotton skirt barely covered her butt. Boots with alternating strips of leather and canvas laced up just above her knee. Chocolate brown swirls decorating the interior. I'm just having such a hard time trying to read this and picture it in my head at the same time. It is a difficult yep. task. Then the bedazzled jeweled tentacles burned bright red. In a flash, they melted into one, forming a belt of golden yellow fabric that rested snugly on the scout's hips. It's her centura. Tuki whispered. Amazing, Dylan managed to say. We're not going to explain what that is, because this is world building, in which all the characters know what that means, and therefore it's word world building. Her what? Centura. Kind of like Ace Ventura, but with an S. <laughs> Centura. The scout lifted both hands to her face and peeled her veil slowly from the bottom up. The girls oohed and aahed. For she had shimmering, caramel-colored skin, the very skin that had made trillionaires of quite a few CEOs of skincare companies. Full, soft-looking lips with a deep Cupid's bow that had inspired so many girls to wear a glow-glow lip gloss. Large, emerald eyes with mile-long lashes that... I wonder if these are, like, literally mile-long lashes, because everything else <laughs> up to this point has been literal. <laughs> that seemed to look into your soul. Knowing exactly what you desired, needed, at any given time. Tuki gasped. Could it be? She looked around at the others, and they were awestruck too. Are they the actual Intoxabella? It was the celebrated, renowned, mythical Intoxabella. Do you know who this is? CL? Yeah, CL! Yeah, CL! Oh, God, she shows up! She actually shows up! Mystery solved! We found C. Tilda L. So after you're done being, like, the Intoxabella of the year, do you get to, like, go out and be a scout and I turn guess, into lampposts? I guess she just became undercover and... What? Okay, now we need a we need a voice for so C. Tilda. So did she L. go rogue as a scout and pick unconventional people? I think so. I think she's rebelling. Which Interesting. I approve. Also, I don't remember any of these powers of a scout being included in the description for the Intoxabella's no. powers. Because Ciel has, like, all their powers, but... Yeah. All those powers combined were not that. <laughs> so how'd she get those? I don't know what's even going on anymore. I was just excited that I'm like, Oh, a character's being brought back up that was mentioned earlier in the book. Good job. job. Good job, Tyra. Sorry, I was sweating buckets back there. The Intoxabella sniffed her armpits. Yuckity yuck. I totally forgot to put on my sweat stopper this morning. I'm a girl who can't skip a day, if you know what I mean. you your Dylan stammered. Is she too good to say deodorant? Yeah, I, I guess so. That or deodorant's not a thing here. Maybe. It's sweat it's stopper. Sweat stopper. Maybe, it's, maybe she's supposed to have like some sort of 20s accent, and maybe like that's something they said. I don't know. I'm... The most distinguished, Piper began, but was too stunned to finish. The C till the L. Because she probably said it like that because she doesn't speak the language. <laughs> Shiraz summed up. Tuki gaped, feeling completely unworthy of having a conversation with a creature so regal and divine. She's still human. She's not a creature. Right. CL. They called the uh, lizard things creatures. Yeah, that's a little odd, isn't it? Because creatures seem to be negative, and now it's like... Like... Alien? Weird? I don't know. <sighs> Exotic. Exotic. That would be a better way of saying. I don't know. CL, the last triple seven. A real seven, seven, seven... Thank you for making me type this out later. With all seven Intoxabella powers, was the one who had taken them to the ends of the earth. 
for the one who had taken her hand instead of miracles. And finally, the mystery was solved. Where the hell is C. Tilda L? Why, she was right here. They just missed her. <laughs> yes, I'm C.L., the Intoxibella said, a calm, reluctant smile fluttering across her lips. She stared at Dylan, Piper, and Shiraz in amazement. It seemed like something clicked in her mind, and her expression totally changed from serene to something much darker. Hendel, Catherine, Woodland, I can't believe it. She ran up to Dylan and put her ear to Dylan's mouth. What? She ran up to Dylan and put her ear to Dylan's mouth. Then she moved to Shiraz and placed her fingers on her wrist. Finally, she touched Piper's chest where her heart was. Yeah, it's good you clarified that because that made me really concerned you just sexually assaulted somebody. <laughs> you all made it. I think she's just cuckoo. -coo. Does she recognize like features <coughs> that are sort of like other people she's known? I think that's. I think she's thinking she picked up her friends. Uh, see, Tilda all went nuts. They were right. <laughs> The three girls looked at each other confusedly. Huh? Ciel noticed Tuki and coolly extended her hand. Her welcome was far less enthusiastic. Excusez-moi, Guru Applause stood behind them. I hate to break up the party, but je one day these seamstresses... I probably said that horribly, horribly wrong. Ciel, thank you for transporting them so swiftly. I will take them now. Ciel shielded the girls protectively. With all due respect for the world of handmade couture, as well as for you, Guru Aplaz, thank these young ladies are not dressmakers. They are tastemakers of tomorrow. Bellas of Modeland. Tastemakers? Tastemakers. They create the new styles because they'll be on Toxabellas, is what I think she's saying. Okay. Gotcha. It's like taste mm -hmm. in clothing. Yeah. Gotcha. The girls exchanged a shot glance. Bellas? Everyone knew that was the Milan term for students. So they weren't sacrifices? Comment? Guru applause recoiled. I'm just going to start calling her Guru because I can't say her last whatever name. Name her clapping. Clap. Because <laughs> like, like, clap. Because like applause. I'm just going to call her clap. Recoiled from the girls as if they had an airborne illness. Look, sweetie dear, I am fatigued, and I'm going to go nurse my headache. No, that's not what she said. I am fatigued, and I'm going to go nurse my handache. Please, so please stop this jovalet and have my new seamstresses report to my couture. And with a beauty queen wave of its hand head, the guru left, turned and laughed. <laughs> Don't mind clap, girls, C.L. murmured. The guru's a bit frustrated to have been born with three hands while the rest of the fam has four. Where would you have another Where hand? Where would the other hand go? Dare I ask, where does the other hand go? Dare I ask where the other hand goes? Let's not ask. Let's not ask. Do you just have, like, two two hands here? Maybe you have two hands. So you can actually, like, clap them together. I oh, it could be. Reach down, like, with your head to grab things. I think that's I... best case scenario is two hands kind of slapped together for a head. Uh, so there are more hand people like this? Apparently there are more hand people like this. Which just makes me believe further that the leg gizzards are actually some sort of Lizard pe people. Lizard people. That eat humans. Mm -hmm. And weren't mentioned again. No, they may never be mentioned again. I want to know about the Legizards. You'll never get to know, because life's not fair. <sighs> Tuki's gaze was still fixed on CL. She just couldn't believe this was happening. Beyond being awed by CL's worldwide fame, Tuki actually respected her the most of all the Intoxabellas. She actually had substance behind her heavily made up face and accessory adorned body. C.L. was a legendary spoken word poetry slam champion, spouting many controversial poems that even some of the snobbiest literary critics praised. So is that implying that all models are, besides C. Tilde L., that all they are are a pretty face and that none of them have any other sort of like good qualities to themselves? 
Yep, that's exactly what it's implying. Is that she was the first different one. And everybody before her had nothing to them but the way they looked. I feel like that is not the point that you should be trying to make. Yeah, I, I hope this is, like, part of Tuki's naivety that she doesn't see, like, models as having, like, any other sort of, like, qualities besides, like, their looks. Could be. So I hope that's the case, and I hope that, like, that the book goes on to then have Tuki learn, like, no, every person, they all have their own character, they all have their own skills, their own talents. I hope that's what happens. I guess we'll have to read and find out. Yep. Oh, jeez. She gave her keynote addresses at college graduations, speaking up about her many interpretations of human beings' physicality. Cial was an icon, and Intoxabella unafraid to speak her mind. Uh, how about a girl who's got a brain, who always speaks her mind? Nah. But then Tuki realized something. Why was Ciel a T-Dod scout? Was it a demotion? After all, everyone knew that the scouts weren't mm. sevens. They were second string model land bellas who tried to reach seven status but missed it by a hair. So if you fail to become an Intoxabella, you go and you end up with like a light bulb for a head like the lady that popped yeah. out of the lamp? Yeah. I'm thinking about the different reviews we read and like the nurses they described. Yeah. Do you take on like maybe a certain <laughs> quality and that like becomes your person? Or, like, that becomes, like, your new appearance? Maybe. Oh. oh, this ought to be good. Oh, no. This ought to be good. The other girls were gaping at CL2. How did that cheer about... Oh. How did that cheer about CL go? Dylan asked, her eyes bright. She raised her arms overhead, fist clenched. Give me a big C. A little I. A tilde. Shiraz joined in. E executing the cheerleading moves that went along with the chant. What do you do for a tilde? T t t a tilde, what, yeah. What, what to, would you do, like? To I don't know. <laughs> to signify the tilde, the squiggle character at the center of Shiel's name, because we have to clarify this of all things, but nothing else that's going on. The girls made a wiggly shape with the, f oh, with the flats of their hands. I think they're just making a worm. Or like, are what? with the flats? I think they're just doing this. So they're just going like, like this. Give me a C. Give me an A. Uh, give me a tilde. Come on, Tuki. <laughs> Dylan said, bumping Tuki's hip. What's the next line? Gee, I wonder what it is. Tuki bit her lip, still feeling shy. Uh, I think it's throw me a lanky, lanky, long L. She remembered the rhyme from the playground of B3. I had a girl, Dylan whooped. Simple and clean, no. But not a tongue twister. That's the way, 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 way you spell CL. Please stop, CL said flatly. <laughs> Thank yes, you, CL. Please stop. I hate this so much. Dylan... Was that even a rhyme? Oh, it's a cheer. It's supposed to be a cheer. So it's like I a know, chance, but, but like... is it Dylan that says that it's a rhyme? No, it's just a cheer. The word rhyme was in there somewhere, and it's Tuki not. remembered the rhyme. It doesn't rhyme, does it? Unless I'm just like missing just, part. I would need to see it laid out, and it's a. It's kind of a stretch. Oh. Dylan lowered to her knees in front of CL. I've recorded all your speeches and poems. You're so, so powerful. Please don't bow down to me. That worship stuff is, uh, kind of not my thing, CL said, pulling Dylan up. Plus, you'll have plenty of cow towing to do today, so spare your delicate knees. Oh, which reminds me, I have to recite the welcome crap. <laughs> I'm liking her more and more. <laughs> she straightened up and cleared her throat. Welcome to Modeland. 
CL said in a monotone as if on autopilot. Welcome to Model Land. I'm thinking now April from Parks and Rec. <laughs> First up, please welcome April Ludgate. Hello, I'm April Ludgate. I'm 20 years old. I like people, places, and things. And Pawnee is my favorite place in the world. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Model Land, CL said in a monotone as if on autopilot. You, no Novu Bellas, are among the chosen few, but your place in the land is not promised. It is yours to earn every day, every minute, every second. CL trailed off. Ugh, you know what? I can't recite that mess with a straight face. Besides, you'll hear it all again momentarily from a stone bitch. <laughs> all right. All right. The intox bell then started to scratch her arms and legs. Ugh, this getup is itchy as hell, man. She's totally like... Didn't she dress herself? This is totally April. Ugh, the suit makes me want to scold a Catholic child. I don't know who Ann Taylor is, but I hate her and I want to kill her. And with that, she shook her body in her avant-garde skirt. Shirt and boots instantly transformed into a t-shirt, ripped jeans, and dirty sneakers. It is April. Yep. Girl, you are so real. Recite a poem about us, CL. Dylan begged. CL raised a perfectly plucked eyebrow. You want me to freestyle right here? <laughs> right now? That was nah. like that was like exactly my thought of like, don't just, just order don't her. <laughs> then before oh. one of your seven powers, Piper urged, I'd love to see excite to buy. Or maybe even multiplicity. You you wanna buy some from her right now? Is that what you're saying, Piper? Because that's what that power is going to do. I'm sure that C. Tilde Owl just loves being ordered around this and treated like exactly like the Intoxabella. She apparent, apparently doesn't really want just... to be. She said, like, don't worship me. I'm assuming it's going to go along the lines of don't order me to recite poetry on the spot and expect it to be good. Don't just sit there and be like, show me your powers. Because she doesn't get that enough, I'm sure. Oh, man. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Honey child, you've already seen the powers at work, CL said nonchalantly. How do you think we got to Model Land? In a bus? <laughs> the teleportation and flying! Shiraz cried, thrusting her chest out and stretching her arms behind her in a V. Anyway, there's no time for power, show, and tell or a slam now, CL said. But hopefully I'll be seeing you again if you pass the torture tests. <laughs> oh no! I'm hoping she's just like being like sarcastic or like just know. kind of like like yeah, walking high heels that could be torture. I'm hoping that's what she means. It's just kind of like nothing's a guarantee in this book. Oh, good luck, Chuki and. Tukey and friends. And Tukey Dylan and, and Shiraz and, and, and Piper. Piper. Tukey swallowed hard. The torture test? What did that mean? Sial turned for the smoke door. The winds and swirling dust had subsided, revealing the colossal wall the girls had seen from the sky. It was a mash of an antiquated musical instruments, ragged slices of art canvases, clothes and outdated accessories of seasons past, and an immense assortment of architectural pieces. Marble arms and legs jutted out from the bulkhead, making it difficult to stand too close. Every, be, I, I'm getting so lost because I cannot, I physically cannot picture this. So are head. they like looking at a mountain of stuff or is it a wall? I don't know anymore. <laughs> what is there comes on? a problem when you describe things so in depth like this. You lose readers, and I was reading it, and I retained none of it because that's what happens like, when I meet description. It sounds like just like a pile of like junk, like musical instruments, and then were there clothes and like uh -huh. what do you mean architectural something? Like, do you have like just pillars lying there? Cool, like I, I I'm having trouble picturing this. I think it's a big pile of crap on the other side of the store. 
It's kind of what I'm going to leave it at. Oh, I'm... wait, this is through the door Ciel goes through? Yeah. Also, why does she even disappear? She drops him off in the bag. And then she's gone. And then she walks out of the smoke door in the so nude. You could meet, what? So you could meet Clap without interruption, I guess. There's no reason. Anyway, marble arms and legs jutted out from the bulkhead, making it difficult to stand too close to. Beyond stood the carp gold, blue, and silver model and gates. Oh, we haven't even gone through the gates yet. Eight immense gears were at each corner of two gigantic doors. The gears were connected to steel arms. Literally, arms with four arms, hands, and fingers that crossed in the center of the two doors, holding them tightly in place. A chorus of unseen women's voices word help. Help. I've never U seen words. Ululated? Like, undulated, but ululated? Ululated? Yeah, I've never seen that word uh, before. I wonder if it's a word. It is a word. Does not mean what I thought it did. All right, so verb, ululate, means to emit long, loud cries, like a howl or a roar or a wail or a yawp or a yawl. A yawp. Ululate with sorrow. That'll help me read this next part. I'm sure that every teenage reader will know that word. Especially if a 23 and 24 year old knew, knew, totally just knew that word. Teens are gonna know that word for sure. I've had to read a lot of weird books for like classes and whatnot. I've never seen that I've word. I've never seen that word in never. my life. Thanks, Tyra. Hello and well, well, welcome to Model Land. More people appeared around mm. them. Other scouts in their pods, pouches, and people pockets landed on the soft fabric grass. Ciel led Tuki and the others to a line of new bellas standing in front of a peculiar mosaic tiled face. Its features seemed to shift depending on where you were standing, much like looking in a funhouse mirror. To the left or right, the face looked distorted and terrifying. You could have just left it at funhouse mirror because we understood what that meant. But when you stood directly in front of it, the face was three-dimensional and breathtaking. What we do here? Shiraz asked. This is where you register. Ciel explained. The girls watched as an ash blonde Bella approached the mosaic face. The K of Nordensley, she said, referring to an icy land. The mosaic face abruptly sprang to life, its bulbous eyes opening. Validated, it yelled. I like that it's validated. That's weird. You're a valid person now. I guess. I mean, like, it make, just means that, like, yeah, it Checks out. Checks out. You're approved. You've got uh, access. You've got permission. Yeah, but you could say, like, registered or something. It's just weird. Validated. Anyway, yeah. a green light appeared. A striped barrier lifted. And VK advanced to a holding area beyond the gates. I hate this so much. Franca of Cappuccina, the next girl in line said. Authenticated, the face deemed. Franca joined VK. Kamalini of Chakra, said a girl wearing an intricately embroidered chartreuse rat dress made of endless yards of the finest silk. One arm was full of gold bangles, and her eyes were decorated with the smize, which fluttered every time she blinked. I hate that we're describing these all because I don't know that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to remember what any of these people look like anyway. I hope that these characters, that everyone that is named shows up again and becomes, mm -hmm. like, an actual character with a personality. Because, like, Harry Potter with the sorting hat, it's not like it lists it super, like, a lot of random names. It's very like much... Like, it mentions, like, Harry, Ron, Hermione, Hermione Neville. Yeah. Like, names that, like, at least... Sh they show up. They're, like, real uh -huh. characters that have personalities and they serve a purpose and have a role. Yep. These guys? Who knows? Documented. A girl with toned golden thighs stepped forward. Bibiana of Terra Bossa Nova. Confirminated. Confirm. All right, Glinda. Confirmated. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> the face scrunched up, seeming to know full well that confirm. Confirmated wasn't a word. Yeah, duh. 
Tuki, Piper, Dylan, and Shiraz moved up the line. In front of her, Tuki spotted a familiar girl with pin straight auburn hair and a golden yellow dress with matching shoes. She had brilliant white teeth and an attitude as thick as the afternoon air in Peppertown. Tuki sucked in a breath. No, this can't be happening. She hasn't even done anything to you yet, Tuki. She hasn't done anything. Wait to hate her until the her only crime. Friends. They're going to be best friends, Garrett, 100%. Putting it out there now. I hope so, because right now her only crime is, you know, dating Tuki's crush. Yep, and that's not a crime. No. You can date who you want to date. Yeah. ZZ of Metopia, the auburn girl, haired girl, trilled haughtily, corroborated Zarpest. What? <laughs> yeah, corroborated or corroborated or. Corroborated. Corroborated. It just wants me to say that's, weird things for two hours straight. That's not how that word can be used, can it? I don't no, know. it can't. Mm -hmm. Because that's up. like to like to affirm to like reaffirm a fact, like so it sort of works, but it's never used it's like, in that sense. Yeah, it shouldn't be like agreed. Like, right, you are that thing. This again is Tyra pulling up the thesaurus and going, "That word's close enough, and it looks fancy. I'll use that. So I'll seem smart." <sighs> Zarpessa, Tuki blurted out. Zizi turned at the sound of her name. Her eyes clapped on Tuki's, and horror rippled across her lovely face. Then, without saying a word, she turned and marched to a holding area. So she did see me at the dumpsters, Tuki thought. That doesn't prove anything. I think that's why the look of horror comes, because she knows that now no. Tuki has the secret um, that she can share with everyone. Maybe. Because otherwise, there's no reason for her to look at her with horror. I'd just be like, my first thought was like, oh, the weird girl made it in. Like, that's mm -hmm. odd, but oh well. Clearly, Zizi doesn't want to relive that moment. A few more girls passed on through. One of them, a tall raven-haired girl wearing way too much makeup and a sequined miniskirt that was hecked all the way up to her butt cheeks. Nothing but two giant faux diamonds covered her chest. <laughs> Looking real I'm just, classy. I'm just liking her name. Chased runnings from Minier. She <laughs> lilted seductively into the mosaic face. She shimmied a little, showing off her round, pert butt. Then it was Tuki's turn. Tuki from, um, Metopia, she whispered at the mosaic. Louder! The face boomed. Tuki, uh, Metopia? Pepper Town? She said a teensy bit louder. The face paused. Here it comes, Tuki thought. The revelation of the day of discovery administration error. The painting smiled awkwardly and yelled. Sub, um, substantiated. But it didn't sound so sure of its decision. Before the face could change its mind, Ciel ushered Tuki into the holding area. Then Ciel walked back to the face leaned down and whispered something into where its ears would be if it had any. The other scouts accompanying their bellas stood on their toes to see what the famed Triple Seven and Toxabella was doing. At first, Ciel laughed as if the face had told her a joke, but then Tuki noticed that Ciel's lips weren't moving. She wasn't really whispering anything to the mosaic at all. What was happening, however, was that one of her jeweled tentacles was making contact with the face. A surge of sparks traveled from the tip of the tentacle to the mosaic's mouth. The, <laughs> the face looked temporarily stunned. All of its tiles were suddenly scrambled. Shiraz, Dylan, Piper, commanded Ciel. Come up here, now. Shiraz approached the face. Say your name, Shiraz, Ciel urged. Shiraz from... Vindicated, the face trilled before Shiraz could finish. Then Ciel yanked Dylan up to the face. Name, Ciel insisted. Dylan from Bo- Predicated. Predicated, a verb. It means to make the grammatical predicate in a proposition. Or, two, to affirm or declare as an attribute or quality of, such as in, the speech predicated the fitness of the candidate to be president. So proclaim. Or, it could also mean, involve as a necessary condition of a consequence, as in logic, such as in, solving the problem is predicated on understanding it well. 
None of which apply to what nope. Tyra used. Nope. <laughs> nice try, Tyra. The source failed you once again. Another example of why you cannot just pick a word, throw it in the thesaurus, and then say, yes, I can use whatever word, doesn't yep. matter, it will work without fail. No. Nope. Nope, you guys. still have to go and check the definition and make sure it makes sense from a grammatical and logical standpoint. Yep. Thanks, Tyra. Ciel pushed Piper forward and positioned her dead center. Speak now, Ciel barked. Pipe justificated. The tiles fell back into place. Other Bella stepped up, not even noticing anything was amiss. Ciel shoved Piper, Dylan, Shiraz, and Tuki into the holding area. She pushed them so hard, Tuki tripped over her big feet, nearly tumbling on the grass. Dylan helped her up. What was that about? Dylan whispered to Tuki. What, don't you like the express lane? Ciel snapped harshly, but then winked. Tuki stared at her, puzzled. Was Ciel on their side or not? Of course she, she is, is, you idiot! <laughs> she somehow, like, tripped the system to let him in. They're obviously not supposed to be there yeah. if you have to try and She's scramble the system somehow yeah. with her newfound electrical powers. I don't know. I, I don't remember that being... Yeah, I don't remember that being part of the Intoxibella powers that we were introduced to. But it's fine. The last of the new Bellas marched into the holding area. Tuki counted 100 girls in total. She also kept running a tally of the t number of Smizes. Six. The seventh was Miracles. She was supposed to be here, not Tuki. Suddenly, the giant gears on the gates began to turn, generating a deep rumble that Tuki could feel in her feet. Slowly, the gates opened inward. Ciel bent down to the girls. Alrighty then, my job here has been completed, for now. Back to the torture chamber for me, and the beginning of it for you. Shiraz looked alarmed. Torture for you and us? Ciel shrugged. Beyond your wildest nightmare. And as for me, I got myself into this mess. What mess? Tuki inquired, hoping she didn't sound prying or rude. But Ciel just turned away. With a flash of golden light, a hole opened in the ground. Ciel fell backward into it and was gone. One by one, all the other scouts melted or flashed away, leaving the new Bellas alone. The gates continued to roll open. Tuki squinted to make out her very first glimpse of Modeland. Through the still, narrow slit, she saw that it was like nothing she could have ever imagined. And that is the end of the longest chapter that has ever existed. <laughs> okay, so the, see, I'll, see Tilda L's last statement is that essentially she views, I'm assuming just Model Land as a whole and the whole idea of like being a model being in Taxabella is dumb. As torture and dumb and probably like a prison. What did she do? She literally went out and handpicked four more girls and dragged them into this, which is why she says, at least I got myself into this, implying that they didn't, that they weren't going to be picked, that they did not necessarily care or want it and would have probably been yeah. fine without it. So is she going to actually take responsibility for whatever happens I to these four? Like she's just trying to screw up the system and she's like oh, trying probably. to like throw everybody into a tizzy and it's not that she believes in so, these people. She's like, who are the biggest screw ups in this entire world? I'm going to pick, pick them. the biggest underdogs and see if we can pull this off. I feel like she's going to pull a bunch of things. And oh, like, yeah. I want her to be like a very gray character. Gray is either right. neither good nor bad. I like great characters. I think she might be fun. She might be a fun character. Especially if she's April. So yeah, thanks guys for watching and hanging in there with us. If you like what you're listening to, make sure you tell us all about it in the comments below. Uh, make sure you subscribe so that you can follow along as we are now, I think we can say officially, at least 20% through this book. Woo! We're almost a third. <laughs> Maybe we're 25. We're a quarter. We're a quarter. I would think so. We're a quarter yeah, through this book. Through. So we're we're feeling pretty good. And yeah, so hopefully you guys are enjoying and make sure you check us out next time as we continue with chapter fourteen.
I can't even pronounce that. So we're just going to have to figure out <laughs> next time what the chapter title is.